It was around noon on Memorial Day of 2017. My car was in the shop for a few days, so to the outside world, it would seem that no one was home. I was sitting in the living room watching television when I noticed a shadow being cast from the window behind me. I thought nothing of it, as the window faces the street and our front lawn is not very big. To me, it seemed like someone was just walking down the road. No big deal. But almost simultaneously, however, someone passed by the window to the carport, heading to our side door. I went to check it out, and before I got to the door, he knocked. When I answered the door, I saw him in a white duct tape motorized scooter, now under our carport. He told me he had been walking down the road pushing his scooter, and he was wondering if he could rest for a moment. It was a hot day, and I could tell he had been walking. I decided to give him a break and sit under my carport for a minute. I even gave him a mellow yellow from the fridge. Thinking if he had a cool drink, he would leave as soon as he was finished. I returned to my living room, then there was another knock, but this time on the front door. I answered it, and this guy was asking if we were selling a scooter here. I told him no, and he apologized, and then he walked off and I closed the door. I looked outside the window and saw that the guy in the scooter was still there. At this point, I was really suspicious, as most people would be. I decided to make something up to get the guy to leave by saying my friend was about to be here and that he needed to park there. When I opened the door, I asked him if he was feeling alright now, and he told me he was just resting. Before I could tell him my made-up excuse to get him to leave, the guy from the other door came from around the side of the house. He talked to the scooter guy and said, Hey man, I've been looking everywhere for you. I thought you might have been stealing these people's scooter. They laughed for a moment, and then they both walked to the street with the scooter. I closed the door and decided to watch them from my front window. They both loaded the scooter in the back of a big red truck parked in the street. I was not there when I talked to the front door guy. The driver was staring at the window I was looking out of, and after they got in, they took off. I called the police, and an officer came over almost immediately. I live a block from a police department. When I told the cop about what happened, he told me they had similar reports of a guy with a scooter casing houses, probably thinking that no one was home for the holiday. He told me that I probably scared them all since I was home. Still though, I'm very lucky that they weren't violent. Every Memorial Day, I think about what happened. So my husband, Ted, is in the military. We have generally lived on base every station that we have been to because the surrounding towns can be very crime-ridden and sketchy. And with my husband gone most of the time, the extra security is appreciated. I work from home due to us moving so often. So one afternoon, I was taking a break. I had made a bite to eat and I was snuggling up on the couch with my dog. That's when I heard the sliding glass door open. It was so nonchalant, I thought it was Ted. I saw the cat run from the kitchen and a shadow standing near the door entering it. I thought maybe he had come back for something. So I called out for him and was like, What are you doing home? Did you forget something? No answer. This is where I just got an eerie feeling. After I asked what he was doing here, I saw the shadow move and heard the click of the sliding door lock. From there, he walked to the laundry room and shut the door. I still had received no response. So I'm sitting on the couch, scared out of my mind, and I call my husband, hoping to hear his phone in the laundry room. I don't hear a ring, but he does answer. I asked him why he came home, and he didn't answer me. And all he says is, That wasn't me. Grab the dog and get in your car. I freak out. After getting off the phone with Ted, I grab the dog and run to my car. From there, I called the military police. Waiting for them was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. When they got there, they cleared the house and found no one. They asked me to make a statement, and even they were baffled that someone would try this on a base. We still live here. I'm just so scared that he'll come back. I first heard this story when I was in college. I had come home for winter break and I remember it was just me and my dad in the house. I was watching some kind of ghost hunters program on TV just for laughs. I don't really believe in that stuff though. When you watch the programs on TV, they're just so obviously fake. It's too hard for me to let go of my preconceptions and just watch and try to get into it. My dad was the same way. So I thought. He didn't seem interested in the paranormal or anything. He was kind of the guy who would scoff at anything supernatural. The program I was watching flipped to a commercial and I casually got up and found my dad in the kitchen. Kind of out of the blue, I asked him, Hey dad, 
Do you believe in ghosts? His reply was so casual it shocked me. Really? I asked, a bit taken aback. Like it just doesn't seem like you. He shrugged his shoulders and mulled over what I had just said. Yeah, he replied eventually. But I know ghosts are real. I've met one. Upon hearing this statement, I had to know the story. You see, my dad is like me. He likes to tell stories. I could retell most of his stories from memory, just because he would tell them so frequently to anyone who would listen. Yet here was a story I had never heard of an event that changed my dad's life. To this day, I don't even know if I believe it or not, but when someone who is so influential in your life, someone who seems so logical and so down to earth, tells you something like this, it calls into question what you believe and why. But he never brings it up when I talk to him about it. He swears it's completely true, no exaggeration and no doubt in his mind about what happened. So here it is, told from his point of view. I was back in the house in Tacoma, where you grew up until you were about four. My parents still lived in the house, but I was going to college. I was back visiting them for a weekend. I was just over at Tacoma Community College, so it wasn't far away. Came back often to visit and get a home-cooked meal. I remember that I was sitting down for dinner with my parents, just the three of us. It was in the late spring, early summer season, so it hadn't really gotten dark yet. We were talking like normal when the phone rang in the kitchen. My mom got up and answered the phone, leaving my dad and me in the other room together alone. After a short while, she called my dad into the kitchen as well. Leo, can you come here for a moment? I remember that she seemed worried. Her voice was kind of shaking a bit. My dad wiped his face, got up and joined my mom in the kitchen. They weren't in there for long, but they were talking quietly and it felt strange. After a few moments, they finally come out of the kitchen. They had their coats on now. Something's come up and we have to go out for a bit, my mom said. There's dessert in the fridge. Help yourself. Don't worry about the dishes, I'll wash them when we get back. My dad said nothing, but I could tell from his face that it was serious. My mom looked genuinely worried. They were out that door in a flash, and I was left to finish my dinner at the table. I cleared the table and washed my plate, despite my mom's instructions. Then I went into the main room to read. I sat down on the sofa and opened one of my school books and began to relax. Hours went by, and my parents still hadn't come back. It was now around 11 o'clock and I was just about to get ready for bed. I walked up the stairs, making my way to the bathroom when I heard a strange noise. I paused and listened for a while. It was the ceiling. The ceiling was making a slow, drawn-out whining noise. The wood was creaking gently. It wasn't an unusual sound, but there wasn't an unusual rhythm to it that made me uncomfortable and curious. After listening for a while, I pulled down the steps to the attic and I listened a bit more. I could hear the sound more clearly now, along with a metallic creaking noise. I gathered up my courage and decided to investigate. I climbed the steps. Now I have to say I wasn't scared. I didn't have an uneasy feeling. Actually, to the contrary, I felt quite comfortable. Even though it was dark and eerie, the energy in the room wasn't forebodying. It almost felt warm and inviting. As I looked around the attic, it quickly became obvious where the sound was coming from. Among the boxes and various other storage was an old rocking chair, one that belonged to my grandmother. It was one of many possessions that she had left with us at the house. She was in a nearby home for the elderly and couldn't fit much of her belongings in her room. The rocking chair was gently rocking back and forth, causing the floorboards to creak beneath it. Next to the chair, an old birdcage was displaying a similar behavior. The cage door was gently swinging open and closed, making a quiet metallic creak. Figured there was a draft, and knowing that the sounds would keep me up all night if I didn't put an end to it, I set out in search of the source. Combed the corners of the room, but try as I might, I couldn't find the source of the draft, nor could I feel it myself. There were no windows, and there wasn't much ventilation. It wasn't even windy outside. It was a calm evening. Furthermore, the chair was heavy as the birdcage, yet there were other things nearby that weren't disturbed. Stacks of paper and the like. After a while, I gave up and looked back at the chair. It was still gently rocking. I walked over to it and rested my hand on the armrest. The chair stopped rocking. Still, I couldn't feel any kind of draft. I lifted my hand and the chair was calm and quiet. But as I turned away, I heard the creaking again. I turned back and the chair was still rocking. It was really strange, but as I had said before, I wasn't really that creeped out yet. 
I shrugged it off and walked over to the birdcage. The door was still swinging open and closed. The cage had once housed a parrot belonging to my grandmother, but it had been empty for some time. I lashed the cage shut, figuring I could at least stop this one sound. I made for the steps, but just as I was about halfway down, I heard the metallic creaking again. I looked behind me and the cage door was back to it. Swinging open, unlatched, right alongside the chair, which continued rocking as before. Something had caused it to unlatch. I was sure that I had latched it properly. In any other circumstance, I would have been scared out of my mind, but for whatever reason, I wasn't. I just didn't feel uneasy. A rocking chair and a birdcage aren't really the harbingers of doom anyway. I descended from the attic with a last glance at the strange behavior and went about my bedtime routine. The creaking continued for a while and I couldn't sleep for it. I went back downstairs to where I couldn't hear the noise and I continued reading. It was a little after midnight when I heard my parents pull into the driveway. They came in and found me reading and they sat down with me. My mom was crying. They explained to me that they had spent the evening at the hospital where my grandmother had just passed away. That's the story as my dad tells it. He believes to this day, before she left this world, his grandmother came home to pay him one last visit. At the time of this story, I've rushed it off, but it sends chills down my spine whenever I think about it. My brother and I have childhood friends that go to the beach with our moms for Memorial Day weekend every year. We've been doing this since before my younger brother was born. On our trip about two years ago, we had just arrived at the condo complex that we were staying at and had begun to unpack. We were on the first floor, so only two flights of stairs to get to our condo. And there was some kind of construction happening a few floors above us, so there were trucks and workers and etc. We had finally finished unpacking our stuff and we were headed down to the beach when I remembered that I left my purse in the car. My mom gave me the keys and they went down to the beach and I went to the car to grab my purse. But while I was getting it, an old pickup truck pulled into the parking lot and an older man got out. He had paint on his shorts so I figured he was a worker. But me, at the time, being a teenage semi-petite girl, kept my eye on him. I got my purse and locked the car, then started heading back to the stairs. I should also mention that the stairs were outside, open for everyone to see. The man started following me up the stairs, but he was several steps behind me. I figured he was headed up to the construction area, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Nevertheless, I started walking faster, and when I glanced behind me, the man was only two steps behind. This is when I really started to panic. I only had car keys and a purse on me, and I didn't know the layout of the condo yet. Where was the knife block? Was the door to the beach open? I finally reached the door to the condo, ran inside, and tried to close it behind me. The man was at the door and was trying to force it open as I was trying to force it closed. I finally just tried to run for it, hoping the sliding door to the balcony and beach was open. Luckily, my mom and my friend were still inside because they forgot to bring sunscreen down. I ran behind them and the man just stood in the doorway. Can we help you? My mom asked. The man awkwardly smiled and mumbled something about looking for supplies and abruptly closed the door. After I calmed down, we went back to the parking lot and his car was gone. I'm confident that the man thought I was going to be alone in that condo with him, and I don't like to think about what could have happened if my mom and friend weren't there. <laughs>